Oh my gosh, do we love this pistol? Check it out. A classic Smith & Wesson J-Frame Model 36 38 Special Snub Nose. It has snap caps in it. Let me put it right there so we can do some dry firing right there. Check that out. Oh, that is a sweet gun. This is actually Tactical Doodle's gun, and he bought it at a pawn shop used. Great condition. Came from an estate sale. Guy hardly fired it. Look at the bluing. TD White filled this logo. He does that with white paint, and it looks great. On this side right here. Yeah, we're going to talk knives here, but this is an out-of-genre embedded mini review. I like doing that. I color ramped that front sight so we could see it better. And then we put on these aftermarket uh, grips on it, which I had in storage, actually. Very cool. The only thing I don't like about these grips is the screw they came with. <laughs> it looks looks like it came from Walmart. You need to either blue that or do something to it. Oh, that's a freaking cool pistol. Five shot, 38 special, classic. Love it, love it, love it. The bluing alone just makes me excited. Uh, that's just going to be a tabletop decoration. We got some patches in the background. I think we need a blade. How about a Microtech, uh, Microtech Scarab? This is my EDC for the day, by the way. Oh, that's cool. That is freaking ill. Oh, I love this. It's fun. Hey, get to the knife, nothing. Oh, dude, we're talking knives right now. OTF. The production date on this one and its serial number 10768 was 2 2011. My favorite auto knives. One of them is definitely Microtech. It's been that way forever. Love them. Uh, oh, yeah. Polestar. I call it the Polecat. C220GPGY. Here it is. I've shown it in a couple other out of genre reviews. Uh, I love this thing. I would totally buy it. There's your mini review right there. You're in a hurry. Use my link below and buy it. The Polestar is a total win from Spyderco. And it's only 60 bucks. It features a powder metallurgy steel too. CTS BD1. It's a low alloy, Martin Siddick, stainless steel. Kind of a modern take on a Japanese, what do they call it? Jin, J-I-N, one steel. Ease of machinability. Good edge retention is what they're saying. But like we see from Spyderco and have seen for years, they're just always changing the steels up. They're really about the steels in classic designs. And they listen to their forum guys, their users, their law enforcement and military operators, maybe a couple of us YouTubers. <laughs> and they'll figure out what we like, they'll see what sells, and then they start featuring it in a, on a permanent basis. Uh, they're not the only manufacturer, of course, that does this. There's a lot that do. But you can look up the formulation of CTS BD1. I may put a screenshot up on it right now. You can kind of see it. It's a cool, cool looking knife. It really looks like a Spyderco that would cost more money to me. The Spyderco Polestar. They're calling it a budget conscious knife. I don't know, man. It looks freaking more expensive than it is. $60. I mean, I just reviewed that titanium frame lock, the Mantra, which I love. But, dude, it's $170. Bucks. You could buy three of these for one Mantra. Is that worth it? Nope. Not worth it. Oops, I said that out loud. I should have said that out loud. <laughs> Go get a Polestar instead. And If you're a Spidey lover and you're just like wanting to you know, add to your collection, whatever it is, Polestar, bro all day long. Let's start with the blade. No surprises here. It looks just like the blades we've seen for the last 10 years in TMP. The tenacious, the resilience, the persistence. It's very similar to those profiles. It's a leaf drop point. I love the spidey hole in it. It's a big old spidey hole. Awesome. So we can put you know our deployment devices in there. See the Sao logo on there and the Chinese emblem on there. It is produced in China. That's why the cost is so inexpensive, no doubt. Doesn't really matter where it's produced. And the Spider Co., a genuine Spider Co., the quality is going to be insane. All good. Great jimping on this one. Uh, I have gloves on still from the last review, and I kind of like it. So, hey, I don't like the gloves. Dude, it's better than looking at my ugly hands. <laughs> it's a lot better. 
Uh, I like the jumping on. I think it's fine. So that's a good ramp on it with the Polestar. No underside jimping like we saw on that Native 5 that I just reviewed as well. Not much to talk about in the blade. We've covered it so many times. Speed is uh, no surprise. Good. Can I do a reverse deployment? Yep. Shook it out. Shake deployment. Lockup is right here. Timing of the liner lock. It is a captured liner lock on G10 handle scales. And it is skeletonized. The stainless steel, 420 stainless steel liners are skeletonized. Now, some of you guys may be excited that that's a very thin liner lock. I've talked about this a lot. For an EDC knife, eh, I'm not too worried about it. If you're looking for a fight knife or a tactical blade, maybe look elsewhere. Maybe this isn't the best one for you. There's lots of choices, right? Standard clip on this one, spoonbill clip. And I still have it here, the paramilitary too. I'll usually machine those down to get rid of some of that, that goofiness on the edge and then I just sand it or file it down. Traction on the G10 is moderate. I think uh, the G10 here on this Golden Colorado produced paramilitary 2 is much better. I mean this is a really nice G10 but it's, you know, it's a much more expensive blade. This one's decent and I really love the looks of it. The gray G10 here in the Polestar it's a great looking handle material. Looking at the shoulders of it, any hot spots? Not really. They did a good job of rounding it. Like, uh, yeah, I have gloves on, but I've handled it, you know, without gloves. And I didn't really notice that it was uncomfortable in hand. It's, it's really, the factory did a good job of milling it down so there's no, you know, sharp edges on it. Look at the centering and retention. Look at the stop pin. Standoffs. You can see the skeletonizing down there too, right? It's a lightweight blade too. Let's weigh in here on camera. I like doing that sometimes. Sorry, 36. Got to make way. What do you guys think this weighs? I, I'm going to guess on this one. I'm going to say 3.2. 3.8. That's 0.6 off. No, I never practice that. I just go cold turkey, bro. 36 come back into frame. A lockup, I don't think this is a heavy duty use knife. It's just an EDC blade if we talk philosophy of use. Maybe a tradesman blade. I don't really know how the BD1 would stand up to heavy use, like carpet cutting. Again, I, I'm using my Sheffield utility knife for that, and I've shown it on camera. Let me pull it out of the pocket here. By the way, I'm wearing those. 511 Ridgeline pants. Yeah, those ones. So this is what I'm doing my heavy heavy duty cutting with with carbide blade. Link below. The Sheffield knives are insane. But maybe you don't have it with you. You want to use it. Could it work? Yeah, I think so. As far as chip out capability, rust resistance, uh, I don't have again that experience with the the BD1. If you do, put it down in comment, and especially about rust resistance. And I'm talking no kidding rust resistance. So a Spyderco CTS BD1 steel, if it was exposed to salt environment, let us know how it did. And we'll learn from your experience. That's what I love about my vids is they're kind of like mini forms for the item. And they're Google searchable. So you can search out, you know, Spyderco Polestar, maybe run into my video, look beneath it, and you'll see a lot of dudes that have experience with it that have bought it. Carry is not super deep. You're going to have this portion sticking out from the pocket, but we're pretty used to that. I mean, I've been dealing with this one forever, and I didn't reclip it at all. I've just dealt with it. Some guys like that, though, because they can extract it from pocket. So this is the portion here you can grab. And it has a big old lanyard hole here, just like the Paramilitary 2 does. And it's repositionable, tip up, tip down, in all four corners. So lefties, you'll love this knife. It is totally configurable to you. Great blade. Competitive options. Uh, I'm going to show you one, and this is kind of a cool blade. I did mention it earlier. Here comes. This is a special coloration from Blade HQ. It is a tenacious C22 GPCMO in a camouflage G10. And let's see how close I was. I said it looks like a tenacious blade. Oh, what do you know? Very similar, right? Totally similar. Which would I buy between the two of them? 
Mm, let's compare the blades identically. God, they're very close. Look at that. I cannot believe it. The blades are almost identical in size and grind. FFG, thankfully. Dude, I love both these knives. They're both awesome. I think the Tenacious is going to be just a little bit heavier, not much. It's a toss-up. Either one I could be happy with. I'd probably get a Polestar just because it's something new and different. Right? The, the Polestar is just new and different. And uh, this is too, though. This is a limited edition coloration of a Tenacious. And I think there might be another one here, too. Oh, yeah. I have the same one, but a black blade. Check this out. This is also a Blade HQ Special Edition right here. Oh, yeah. I'll put the links below to the BHQ knives, too. And then a uh, Polestar below. All cool blades. I mean, it's a toss-up. They're all outstanding. The Polecat, though. <clears throat> Polestar. Great blade, man. Great addition. I'm super excited about it because I think it's relatively affordable for the quality you're getting. Nothing fancy.